Welcome back, guys, to another roundtable. My name is Adam. With me once again, I have Rusmin and Victor. Hi, Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And today, we're going to talk about Singapore banks and interest rates. Yep. Right, so interest rates are going up. Everyone knows that. And I thought it would be a good time to go back and revisit, you know, Singapore banks. I think we've talked about banks quite a few times on yep. this roundtable. And uh, they've been pretty good investments for us. Yep. Yep. All right. So um, everyone knows that when interest rates go up, bank stocks tend to go up go as up. well. Yep. Yes. But we want to find out if that's actually true for Singapore banks. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the US Fed fund rate and compare that with our Singapore bank's share prices over the last 20 years and see if there's any positive correlation in that. So we're going to put out a chart over here right now. And Victor, what can you tell us about this chart? Yeah, I mean, I, if you look at the chart, right, um, I think in 2004, when the interest rate, 2004 to 2007, the interest rate go up, you can see there's a spike in terms of the share price. And this is also similarly repeated in 2016 to 2018, where there's a hike. Mm-hmm. Because we've been through a very long period of low interest rate, and after that, when the interest rate went up, the share price also went up. So, so it's right. quite clear to see. I think yep. on this chart that there is yep. a positive correlation. It's quite quite strong. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah, there's no correlation if you uh, plot your interest rate from the money that you have in the bank. <laughs> you plot it there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's going to be below one percent most of the yeah, time. Yeah, your savings <laughs> rate is terrible <laughs> in Singapore anyway. Yeah, yeah. But of course, if you if you look at the latest, uh. Uh, interest rate, right? Um, you know, before the spike recently, mm-hmm. uh, you can see that the bank price actually went up, even though the interest rate was low. Yes. Right. So that that was the case because of the recovery of the uh COVID pandemic. This is the first thing. Second mm. is because uh during the 2020, right, all the wealth, you know, stocks, securities, they all did very very well. So that actually boosts up the bank's uh share price at that point of time. All right. right. So. I, we can see on this chart that you know post COVID the bank stocks started to I think jump pretty pretty quick. Yep. Mm. So you don't think it's because that the market was expecting the interest rates you know going to rise and then they priced this in. You think this was more of a recovery to the mean? Yep. And that uh, it was helped boost by the wealth management, wealth management. Of, the, of all the three banks, right? Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of people were investing during COVID as well. Yes, right. Yes, yeah. yeah. But if you were to look at the net interest margin of the bank currently, right, uh, in 2021 when they report the full year, so the range right for DBS. UOB and OCBC, the range is between 1.45% to 1.56%, mm-hmm. right? So before uh, uh, 2020, right, 2019, right, the, the net interest margin was actually between 1.77 to 1.89. So there's still some room for them to grow uh, from there, right? So uh, when the net interest margin start to increase, which we're going to expect, uh, I think most likely on the second half of the year mm-hmm. that they can actually uh, because there's a lag, lag effect so it's going to take some time before everything kicks in so most likely it's on the second half of the year right and the good news is that even though during the pandemic happened right uh, until now right uh, the loan actually went up so so if you look at DBS loan in 2019 right it's about uh, 362 billion right so right now it's about 415 billion mm-hmm. right and so this and is total loans total uh, loans yeah right. they actually went up so yeah. same for OCBC 264 to 289 billion and also uh, UOB is 268 billion to 310 billion mm. so so despite uh, the pandemic everything the loans still increase but the loan increased on a lower margin okay right so with the interest rate spike right a lot of these loans right are going to convert into high margin so you can see that banks will really uh, significantly benefit from there all right, right. so i think uh, victor has actually attended the recent agms of all three banks yeah correct correct so dbs uh, ocbc yep. and uob so i think each uh, annual meeting is about half an hour to 90 minutes thereabouts um i think the U- dbs was much a longer mm-hmm. maybe one hour plus or something okay. they answer a lot of questions yep. uh i think uh, ocbc has, i think is about an hour but mm-hmm. UOB is very fast. Okay. Right? Because they didn't want to answer a uh, repeated question. So they already post a response on the internet and all this. Yeah. Right? So I think it's a good, I mean, I think we've always mentioned that, uh, if, if, if you know that it's, it's good to attend the yep. AGM to find out more about the company that, you know, you plan to invest in or you already invested in because you can learn new insights from them. Yep. And straight from the management, straight from the horse's mouth. All right. Yep. So, uh, Victor, you attended all three yep. banks. Can you tell us a bit of uh, any specific insights that you learned from any of the three banks? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so I think one thing that uh, the CEO of DBS actually brought out is actually the CASA ratio, which mm-hmm. I felt very 
interesting. What is CASA ratio? CASA is your current account and saving account. So, okay. so if the CASA ratio is very high, right, it means that uh, they have a lot of deposit, right, that is almost zero percent interest or very very low interest, mm -hmm. right. So. So he actually mentioned that uh, during a time of increasing interest rate, right, high CASA ratio, will, they will definitely benefit because mm. these are the accounts with very, very low interest and they can benefit from the spread. Let's right? say their cost of financing is very cheap because yeah. it's just all of us basically yeah. just putting our money in, in DBS yeah. and POSB and they're not paying us anything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's the one that I, when I said at the start, yeah. there's no correlation with the interest rate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and moreover, if, I mean, if you want to get a high, let's say the interest rate go up, they, they reprice the CASA ratio at higher interest. Yeah. You have to do a lot of things to, oh, yeah. to get that two percent or one percent like credit your salary yeah, yeah. and i don't know spend how Use much my credit card yeah. I, I don't know so you yeah. can jump through a lot of hoops to basically Correct, get a high right? interest rate yeah. but if yeah. you don't do all of that our interest rate as con as a re consumer is really really low. Yes, yeah. correct. So what yeah. you're saying is that because the CASA ratios for the, what are the CASA ratios for the bank? Okay, so if you look at pre-COVID, right, the CASA ratio for DBS is about fifty nine percent, right? Right now they are at seventy six percent. Wow. So the OCBC was forty eight percent. Right now they are sixty three percent, and UOB was forty five percent. Right now they are fifty six percent. So they right. all went up. Yeah, they all of them went up. Their CASA ratio. So so these three banks will definitely benefit uh, with the rising interest rate. Yeah. So what you're saying is because they get this cheap source of funds from mm -hmm. us. Right. Yeah. Then when interest rates go up, their the margin is going to go be higher. A, yep. a wider a wider, wider spread yeah. correct and they're going to earn from that because they're not going to give us even a higher interest rate oh no <laughs> at all <laughs> <They're not laughs> a little bit maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah. so so another insight that I get from especially the UOB AGM they actually mentioned that 70% uh, of their portfolio is actually floating rates you know Okay. so so they say that every 25 uh, 25 basis point increase in the Fed rate right mm -hmm. will be a 4% 4 Percent, uh, sorry, four basis point increase in their net interest margin, which means that every twenty five percent basis point increase in Fed fund rate, right, will increase about one hundred and fifty million in terms of incremental net interest income into yeah. their, uh, into their uh profit and loss. Yeah. This is for UOB. UOB. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so this is what the you can expect said. the other banks also will. will, uh, will I get can testify thing. that I'm the yeah. customer of UOB. I take their loans and yep. my interest rate going is going up. Mm -hmm. I'm paying more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, so, but yeah, yeah, correct. But all but all the three banks also mentioned that there's you know there's there will be a lagging effect, right? Yes. Because uh, yeah. they you require some show pricing. Up, yeah. You need to reprice your loans. Correct. And all that yes. Correct. Most yeah. likely, I think you can get the uh, full effect on the probably the second half or something. Right. All right. Okay. All right. So, I mean, if that's true for UOB, I'm sure it's true going to be true for the DBS rest. Yeah. and OCBC yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, and the third most popular question that people is asking is mostly actually the digital banks. Okay. Right? Uh, so, so attending the three, three uh, AGM, right? Uh, they talk a lot about the digital banks and I can see that three of them actually spend a lot of, you know, uh, money into investing in technology, innovation and building the digital. So, so actually, I, I'm not sure how the digital bank, digital bank going to compete with them, but then, uh, I feel I felt that you know the 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 three banks they are also quite digitalized, right? Mm. And in UOB they actually mentioned that they f they feel that the near term maybe digital bank risk to them is maybe five percent of their revenue, mm. right? Okay. So that's what UOB has said, uh, but, Yeah, and even DBS yeah. has been awarded I think the world's best digital bank. Yeah, recently, yeah. Right? correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think I think yeah. the CEO has done a great job correct. at actually yeah. modernizing yeah. the way the bank services its clients mm. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think Singapore Bank is really highly penetrated. It's, I think the digital banks are going to have a hard time fighting these three three banks. They are not like you know, it's like I mentioned always, right? Digital banks is not like your telco, right? Mm -hmm. Your telco you go in, everybody fight by the lowest lowest price. price yeah, right? yeah. But then uh, everybody just switch, right? But in, 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 in banks it's different. People I, I put my money in this bank. I just make sure that my money is still there after you yeah. know few years. There's right? a lot of trust, yeah, really, You need really. to build trust and all this, right? Yep. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's the foundation of yep. banking, basically. Yeah. I think from a digital banking point of view, if I'm looking at Grab, I do have some money in the Grab, and then I just put a couple of hundred or less than that just to make sure that I can use it to make some other payment. Other than that, I won't pay. You're not gonna um, put like your net worth. Uh, under no, 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 <laughs> not even a thousand there actually, <laughs> unless there's a payment that I need to make. Okay. You know? So uh, it's more like an in out in out account. It's like a digital wallet. Yeah. You know, right. wallet usually you don't put a lot of money, right? $50, yep. $100, you know, that okay. for the use, regular use. Yeah. So all three banks basically said the same thing about digital banks. Yeah, they, they, I think they are ready to, you know, fight the digital banks. So it's right. quite consistent from the management of all three Correct, banks. all three management, very consistent. All right, yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else from the AGMs that stood uh, out for I you? I think there's a lot of other things, but I think it's just 
nitty gritty and all, all right. this. I, I think these are the three main things that no, people No one should asked for the free vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will ask that. Okay. Right. <laughs> Unless it's on the actual AGM, I think people ask. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you're interested to know more about the AGMs, I think you, you can't watch it anyway because yeah. if you're not a shareholder, you can't attend it. But if you want to learn more about the AGMs, you can go to the bank websites, the investor relations, yeah. download the... Uh, their response, the, the slides response, and yes, the responses yeah. to the questions that were submitted, that will give you some insight into how the management thinks about certain issues when yep. it comes to how banks are going to be affected moving forward as well. All right, so I think at this point, I think uh, you know people are still going to be interested. I think banks, like I, like I said, is a good, great, great investment for us. Yep. Yeah, yeah, very steady dividends. Yeah. Uh, you want to say something about that? Um, yeah, it's for old men, right? <laughs> for old men. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I'm for a, everyone. Yeah, yeah. My, my so father-in-law loves it, right? My father-in-law loves yep. banks. Yeah, then he keep asking me whether he can actually sell the shares, you know, because the price has gone up. Okay. Yep. Maybe there's something else we want to talk about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think we want to talk about the valuation, bank valuations yep. at this point in time for the Singapore banks yep. uh, and whether there's an opportunity to have a look at them because I think we've been covering the banks for some time. Yep. We covered them when, you know, COVID the happened. The peak of the COVID, yeah. And yep. There was a dividend cap by the MES at that point in time. We said it was. A, we yeah. thought it was a great time to buy. Yeah, there Correct. was a lot of fear at that time. People yeah. were selling down, and yeah. we actually bought quite a yeah. bit of banks as so well. So I think our price was between seven and nine. That was for OCBC. OCBC, yeah, yeah. yeah. OCBC, uh, and now it's gone up, and the dividend has returned as well. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So some of you may think, have I missed the boat? Uh, interest rates are going to go up. Is there a potential yes. upside for all this? Yeah. So what do you think? I I think there's still potential upside for the banks, but mm. depends on which bank. Okay. Like some banks, I think they they have surpassed you know the previous peak. Uh, there's still upside, but probably minimum. I mean, okay. there are only three banks you can yeah. tell us. <laughs> so 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 if you look at DBS, I uh, have the price to book chart uh chart right now. Uh, so their their price to book is actually traded at uh one standard deviation above the mean. Oh, I think DBS okay. is one of the top performance in terms of the bank. They they are the fastest to reach the one standard deviation mm-hmm. above the mean, right? But UOB, uh, if you look at UOB right here in the chart. They actually uh recover from one standard division below to go gone back to the average. Yeah. Okay, the worst performance of the three banks is actually OCBC. So if you look at OCBC, right, they are still traded at one standard division below the mean. Yeah. So in terms of the three banks, right, the highest upside I think is actually OCBC, mm-hmm. right, because uh because there's quite a few bad news on OCBC, which is why they are still traded at one standard deviation below the mean, okay? The first one is that when all the bank increased the dividends, OCBC did not. Mm. They actually uh, reinstate the original 2019 dividend. So there's no increase, but the mm. other two banks, they actually increased the mm. dividends. So I think investor probably was like a bit pissed off, you know, mm-hmm. start selling OCBC and all this, right? Okay. The second was because the, when the fourth quarter result came out, right? The UOB, the DBS, they, they came out very, very good result. Right, but for OCBC, uh, they actually uh set aside allowance, right? Because uh, there's a lot of supply chain disruption in the Greater China portfolio for them. Because if you look at OCBC, they focus a lot on Greater China. Uh, UOB is focused a lot more on ASEAN, like right? mm-hmm. Southeast Asia. That's why you see that they bought the Citibank consumer business. Then DPS, they focus a lot in India, but recently they bought into a Shenzhen uh, bank to expand into China also. So the main one that is really big in China is actually OCBC. So uh, of course, China is being hit by COVID uh, recently and, and a lot of fears in there. And there's a lot of uh, large-scale project that is delayed. So they have to write uh, the net allowance of 370 million. So so instead of gain in the fourth quarter, they actually re- report a, a, a lower figure in the fourth quarter, which is why their share price is still reacting at this yeah. valuation, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think it's a temporary thing because if the COVID is over, you know, they can always write back the allowance and all this, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, of course, currently there's uh, uncertainty in the China, the way how they actually yeah. handled the zero COVID, right? Yeah. So whether, we don't know whether that strategy is going to change because Omicron is highly infectious, okay? Mm-hmm. If they continue to stick to zero COVID strategy, I think that, that yep. you know, it's well, gonna it's gonna drag the recovery. Yeah. Yes, it's gonna take yes. some time if you're yeah. gonna, gonna yeah. catch and yeah. ring fence every case right. yeah. in a, a country the size of China. Yeah. I don't know how's that gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you were to look at OCBC, their yield is around four plus percent okay. based on their fifty three cents and all this, right? Peak the other day. banks is about three three plus percent. Okay, right. So mm. your OCBC is still traded at a very high. Uh, US compared to the other two banks because of all these bad news that they have on it, right? But if you were to look at the track record of uh, the banks, right, uh, or maybe the patterns that the banks have, uh, during the 0809, before the crash in 0809, the peak, and also the 2018 when the interest rate go up, right, the peak, right, they are mostly traded at around 2.7%. 
six, two point five to two point seven percent dividend yield. yield. That was their low yield at that point of time. Okay. So, so if you look at OCBC, it's only four point four. The other banks is three point. So there's still room for them to. Uh, to go up higher moving forward. All right. So yep. like from what I hear uh, to summarize is that OCBC hasn't actually recovered yeah. to yep. to its average at, at least. Not it's yet. It's not yet at not the yet. average. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if, uh, I think the answer is quite clear. If you were to pick one of the three banks right now to invest in, yep. you, you would pick OC, uh, OCBC. OCBC. Yeah. OCBC. Yeah. And it's, it's a great bank still. Yeah. Right? right. I mean, they have some trouble in China. And yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a good thing, but every time when I go to OCBC, there's no queue. But I go to DBS, <laughs> there's a long queue. Yeah. When uh, you mean DBS or POSB? Or DBS both? or POSB, both, right? Long so typically, okay. there's a very long queue. Yep. So that could also explain why the DBS uh, share price performed better than OCBC. <laughs> 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 I, think was, I think that's one of the advantages of DBS Na- is that they have It's that. sort of like a nation bank. Nation yeah, bank, the yeah. national... You know, we grew up with POSB yep, and yeah. then they, they took over but that. As bank. a customer, I'm happy with OCBC because I don't have yeah. to queue and I withdraw my money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I mentioned, uh, OCBC is more focused on the wealth management side. Okay. Right? High net worth, wealth management. So, so it's slightly different customer base. They don't focus a lot on retail because uh, I think yeah. during the AGM, uh, someone asked about uh, why they didn't why they let UOB buy over the you know the city mm-hmm. city group consumer banking? Why did they didn't buy? They they say that they actually look into that, right? But that is not the sector they want focus on mm-hmm. consumer retail side. They are not focusing on that. They are focusing more on the wealth management side, right? So which you can see uh why they they also have a uh, broad record in terms of the a number of AUMs that they have and all this. Right? Okay, yeah. so different focus for yeah, yeah more corporate I think. Okay, yeah. all right. So not a recommendation to buy or sell anything. Uh, when it comes to the banks, please do yeah. your own research and due diligence. We think they are very stable investments. Correct. Yeah. With very steady dividends, but again, whether it suits you and whether it's part of your investment goals, please make your own decision. Yeah. But uh, for now, you OCBC looks like the yeah. one with the most upside, the most attractive here. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's a pretty good wrap up for Singapore banks at this point in time. Interest rates are going up. The chart has shown there is a positive correlation. Yep. Mm. And it should be remain that way yeah. yep. for I don't know how long time in memorial. Yep. I, guess. I mean this year probably <laughs> going to be a good year for the banks. Yeah. Right? yeah. And happy banking. Happy banking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for watching. If any questions about banks, you can put them in the comment section. Uh, and we'll answer them. And of course, if you like this wrong table, please hit the like button and tell us you're doing a great job as well. And you know for Victor because he attended all three agents yep. for you and just gave you the highlights of what was important as well. And of course, subscribe to our channel, many more wrong tables coming up again so my name is Adam with me I have Ruzmin thank you and Victor thank you. thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you around again